Now that we've imported images and we know how to navigate to them, let's talk about editing photographs and transferring quickly between Browse and our edit module. So inside of Browse, real quick before we head into the edit module, so inside of the Browse module, we have this middle section that we use for viewing our images. And we can change the different view modes down here at the bottom left with these first three icons in this group here. We'll worry about these later in our editing experience, but for now, let's just focus on these first three icons. This first icon, which is selected, is the thumbnail view mode or the grid view mode. The next one is our detail view mode. To access the detail view mode, we have to have an image selected. So I'll just select this photograph and then I'll head down here and select detail view mode. In detail view mode, I have a larger thumbnail preview and I can see a lot more of the image. I can also click within the image to zoom and pan around the photograph. The next view mode is my film strip view mode. If I select film strip view mode, that's going to pull up this detail view along with a film strip at the bottom that I can use to navigate to different photographs in that folder. Now to switch between these view modes, there's three different keys on your keyboard that you should remember. Those are E, F, and G. Really simple. E will take you into detail view mode. So if I hit E on my keyboard, that takes me into this detail view mode where I only see the image. Then F, will take me into film strip view mode, F for film strip, and then G on the keyboard will go back to the grid view or the thumbnail view. So now that we know the different view modes, let's find an image, select it, and let's transfer to the edit module to start modifying the photo. I'm just gonna select this image here. I can double click it to go into a detail view mode to make sure it's the image I want to work on. It is indeed the image I wanna work on. So now let's talk about how we can transfer into the edit module. We can either head over here to the right side of our screen and we can just click on this icon, this edit icon here, or we can select it and hold and that way we can pick between the different tabs inside of the edit module. We can also use a keyboard shortcut on our keyboards, which is D. If I hit D on my keyboard, that will open me up inside of the edit module, right inside of the develop tab here. We're going to talk about these different tabs later on in the lesson, but for this video, let's just focus on some common tools and areas inside of the edit module that we'll be using. The first area is this left area, which is this tool well. The tool well is going to house all of the different tools we can use to modify the look of our image. If we don't know what a tool does, we can just hover over that tool and it will give us a little description and a video of that tool in action. So I'll just select the crop tool because I indeed do wanna crop this image. Once I select the crop tool, it pulls up this tool modifier bar up here that I can use to modify the specific tool that I'm using. And keep in mind, every single tool has one of these whenever it's selected. They may be different or they may look similar to this, but they're all going to have different modifiers up here that you can use. So with this photo, I'm just going to head into this menu right here, which houses different preset crop ratios. And I'm gonna choose freeform. That way I can just freely move these different handles around and it will create a custom crop. So I'm just going to move this edge in a little bit and then I'm gonna remove a little bit of this bottom left or bottom right area rather. And I think that looks pretty good just like that. So I'll just hit enter on my keyboard to apply it or I can head up here to this top to a modifier bar here and I can choose apply. Now let's head over here to the right side of our screen and let's focus on this develop tab here. Inside of the develop tab, we have our tone and color pane, which is going to be a commonly used pane whenever we're editing our images. And inside of this tone and color pane, we're going to be modifying the basic look of our image using basic tone and color modifiers and sliders. So we're gonna skip this camera profile part just because it involves 
raw and JPEG files and it can be a bit confusing. So I wouldn't worry about this camera profile menu. Let's focus on this tone area first. Now the tone area is going to house different sliders that you can use to modify your tone. And by tone, I just mean the exposure, the contrast, the, the mid-tones, the shadows, basically all the things that illuminate your photo, the luminance in your image. And with the tone, we're not modifying any of our color. We're just modifying the tonality. That can be a bit confusing, but tone is different than color in the sense that tone, you're modifying the luminance, you know, the brightness or darkness of your image, and then color, you're modifying the saturation or the temperature and, you know, the different hues of color within it. So let's just real quickly go through the basics of each of these sliders here. And let's start with exposure. With exposure, it's going to brighten or darken your image. And you can see here just by hovering over it, it tells me a description about it. It makes your photo lighter or darker. Contrast increases or decreases the global contrast. Basically, it makes your scene pop. It adds in light areas, but it also adds in darker shadowy areas, making the overall contrast or detail pop within your scene. So let's just modify these two real quick. I can pull up on my exposure. It makes it a little flat. There's not much detail. I can add in detail by pulling up on my contrast slider. The next one we have are our highlights. The highlight slider removes the really bright areas within our image. So if I have a blown out area in my sky, for example, I can pull back on this highlight slider and you can see it removes those brighter tones within my scene. We then have our mid-tones, and mid-tones, I like to think of them as the skin tones, basically the middle grays within your shot. So if I want to add in more of those tones, which this image has a lot of mid-tones, I can just pull up on my mid-tone slider and you can see it will brighten those up. If I want to darken mid-tones, I can pull back on the slider. We then have our shadow tones, and for shadow tones, let's zoom in on this area of our photograph right here. Now with our shadow tones, this is going to bring in light, or if you want, it can darken the darker areas within your shot. So if I pull up on my shadow tones, you can see it's illuminating these darker areas within the scene. Below our shadow tones, we have our whites. And the white slider is great for illuminating the white tones in your shot. So you can see I have a lot of white in here with the snow. If I want it a bit brighter, I can pull up on the white slider and it can bring some life into those areas. It can also dim those areas down and you can also use it as a, a bit of a highlight slider as well, taking care of some of those bright whites within your scene. But if you want a little bit of pop within your shot, I'd recommend leaving at least a little bit of true, or not true white, but at least a little bit of white tone within your shot. So now we have our black slider, and the black slider is great for uh, relieving some of those darker tones of contrast. So if I want a little bit less contrast, I can pull up on the black slider because it's illuminating the blacks within the image. But if I want more harsh contrast, I can pull this slider back and I can add in more contrast to the image. If you aren't really into modifying sliders and you're more into quickly editing the image and getting a basic look, I'd recommend modifying your image with this AI Auto button here. AI Auto will intelligently process the tone settings here and bring out a starting point look that you can use in your edit or you can modify. And it will also give you an idea of what these sliders do if you're relatively new to photo editing and these different slider terms. And with AI Auto, you can always go in and remodify these slider settings to fit whatever you're envisioning in your image. Now let's head down here to this color area. And the color area is another commonly used area when we're modifying our images. And I'd recommend starting out just by modifying your temperature and your saturation. If you're more advanced at editing, you probably know about these sliders and can you know, modify them on your photo. But if you're new to photo editing, I recommend just 
looking at your temperature and your saturation. So with temperature, it modifies the color temperature, basically the warmth and coolness of our image. So if I want to make my image more warm, I can pull to the right and it will increase the warmth. And you can see that with this temperature, it's raising the temperature, it's increasing the warmth. I can then cool it down by going the opposite way. You can see it really cools things down within the photo. So if you're looking for a warmer vibe, you can always raise the temperature. If you're looking to cool things down a bit, pull the temperature slider to the left. So I'll just pull this temperature slider back to a more neutral temperature right about there. I think that looks pretty good. And one thing you can do if you're not sure how your temperature color should look is you can use this auto button here. So it says auto is off right now, but I can use auto down here just like I would AI auto up here for my tone. So I'll just select this and it's automatically set my color temperature for me. Now I can head down here to my saturation slider and this is where I can bring in bright colors. If I wanna bring in more intensified colors to my image, I can use this saturation slider to do so. One thing I would recommend doing with the saturation slider is pulling it all the way back to zero and then incrementally pulling it back up while keeping an eye on the image and judging your saturation from there. So I think I like it about there, just at one. It was at negative five before, but I, I really like it at one. I think one looks perfect for this. There doesn't need to be too much color in the shot. We're not really focused on the color. We're more focused on the textures in the image and sort of the subtlety of it. So now that we've modified our tone and our color, now we can talk about these two sliders here, the structure and the haze slider. The structure slider, if we hover over it, it says it adjusts small details and local contrast. Basically, it's incorporating the texture in your image and making the details and the, the smaller areas of contrast pop out of the scene. So let's just pull it all the way to 100 so I can demonstrate that. That's structure all the way at 100. So if I zoom in here, you can see all of the little textures and smaller areas of contrast have gotten much more intensified. So if I pull this back, it removes a lot of that detail. So we pull up the structure, it's just adding in detail. So let's just pull that up a little bit to add in some, some small amounts of texture into the scene here. I think that looks pretty good like that. And we'll, we'll get more into applying detail later on in the lessons when we talk about effects. But for now, the structure slider can help in making your scene pop and bringing out those smaller areas of texture. The next slider we have here is this haze slider. And the haze slider reduces the amount of haze and fog within your scene. An image like this, especially where there's a bit of fogginess to it and it's very overcast, you can alleviate some of the flatness in the shot by pulling back on this haze slider. You can see immediately it makes the scene pop with color and also some detail. So I would recommend using this very subtly at first, but you can always go intense if you like, but it's a very intense slider when it comes to incorporating detail and also color. And uh, to talk about sort of the opposite of that, let's pull up on our haze slider and we can incorporate more of a hazy, foggy look, which in turn in images like this can provide a more dreamy, soft feel in the image. One thing when we're editing our images is that we can always look back at our original really quickly. There's two different ways I'd recommend doing it. The first way is just to hit the backslash key on your keyboard. The next way is to head down here and choose this preview button. This will toggle your original and the preview of your edit off and on. Another thing to keep in mind when editing is how to reset. To reset a particular pane or a tab, there's this arrow icon here. You can use this to reset the entire tab or you can use the arrow on the specific panes to reset those specific panes and modifiers. So if I wanna reset this tone and color pane, I can choose that arrow and it will reset. Command Z to undo. 
And another way I can reset is, go is by going down here to this reset button. I can reset all, but that would reset the crop as well. This will reset all settings and modifiers. If I just want to reset the tab I'm in, I can use this reset settings. So if I choose this, it will reset the settings in the particular tab that I've chosen.